Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day. Praise God. Well, you are welcome. <laughs> well, let's stand to our feet. Usher in the presence of the Lord on this beautiful Mother's Day as we not only honor our mothers, but let's honor one another. Let's honor God this morning as we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise to celebrate who he is and all that he does for us on a daily basis. We just thank you, Lord. We give you glory, honor, and praise this morning, thanking you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it, for we know that something good is about to happen this morning. Oh, praise God that something good is in store. We thank you and we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Blessing the wonderful name of Jesus, your praises shall continually be in our mouth, Lord God. This is the confidence that we have in you, that anything we ask according to your will, you hear us. And since you hear us, we know that we have the petitions that we've desired from you. So, Lord God, we just thank you this morning for waking us up in our right mind with eyes that can see and ears that can hear. We thank you, Father God, for your name that you give us, Father God, to give grace to those that see it, Father God, to give grace to those that hear it. Oh, we thank you, Father God, that you allow us to use your name, and it is above every name. Everything that is named under heaven must bow to the name of Jesus. So we thank you and we give you grace this morning. Hallelujah to the wonderful name of Jesus. We thank you this morning for our bishop and first lady. Praise God. We thank you, Father God, that your anointing rests upon them without measure. We say, Father God, that they hear clearly from you and a stranger's voice they will not follow. We thank you in the name of Jesus that they are blessed and living under an open heaven. We say, Father God, that everything they set their hands to do shall and will prosper in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that not only are they are blessed, but their family are blessed. And this congregation is blessed down to a thousand generations. Oh, we glorify you and we give you praise for giving us pastors after your own heart, Lord God. We magnify you and we glorify you this day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We call in right now the lost in this world from the north, the south, the east, and the west, Lord. We say right now that we are snatching them from the pits of hell and ushering them into the kingdom of your dear son. We glorify you, Father God, that new beginnings will be a beacon of hope, that all those that look upon will see your goodness and your love. We glorify you, Lord God, that this is an oasis of love, Father God that not only will impact Byram, Mississippi, but all surrounding areas in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, and we give you praise that we are the head and not the tail. We are above only and can never be beneath. We thank you, Father God, that we are more than conquerors through and by Christ Jesus. Oh, we glorify you this day, Lord God, and we give you praise and honor. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for all those that are on their way, Father God, that safe travel, Father God. No hurt, harm, or danger, accident, nor incident will come nigh their dwelling. We thank you in the name of Jesus that they will arrive safely and we will all leave safely. We thank you, Father God, that thousands today will receive your Son as Savior. And we give you glory, honor, and praise for it in advance. Oh, we magnify you, Lord God, and we give you praise. Thanking you, Father God, for it is by you that we move and live and have our being. So we thank you, Father God, and we will be anxious for nothing, Father. Knowing, Father, that by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, as we give thanksgiving, Father God, that every request will be made known unto you. Oh, we glorify you this morning, Lord Jesus. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Oh, we thank you, Father God, and we give you praise, Lord God, thanking you for the wonderful name of Jesus. We thank you that we are energized, revitalized, transformed, renewed, restored powerhouses for God. 
Let's say that together. We are transformed, renewed, restored powerhouses for God. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We say that everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord God, that there is an open heaven, Father God, that all of heaven is backing us up. We thank you in the name of Jesus that every family that is represented here this morning is blessed, Father God. Oh, we glorify you and we give you praise, Lord God. We magnify your name, Lord God, for we know that our footsteps are ordered by you, Lord. Oh, we glorify you, Lord, that we won't lean into our own understanding, but in all our ways we will acknowledge you, for it is you that will direct our path. So we glorify you this morning. We give you praise this morning. We come with an anticipation and an expectation of a move of the Holy Spirit this morning. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We don't come for a show to this outside world, but we come just to say thank you, Lord God. We come just to say thank you, Lord God. If we had a thousand tongues, Lord, we couldn't thank you enough. We give you glory this morning. We give you honor this morning. We give you praise this morning. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. If he's ever done anything for you, shout hallelujah. Oh, that's the highest praise, praise God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that there is none like you in all of the earth. We magnify you, Lord God, and give you praise. Oh, we glorify you this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we magnify your name, Lord God. Blessed be the name of the Lord God who always causes us to triumph. Blessed be the name of the Lord God who always causes us to win. We thank you, Lord God, that the battle is not ours, but it belongs to you. We thank you that we fight, you fight our battles, for we know that your burdens are easy and your yokes are light. So we thank you, Father God, for the trade-off in the name of Jesus. Oh, we glorify you, Father God, that we will continue to grow and live and be strong in you, Lord God. Oh, we thank you, Father God, that you will hide us in the secret place, Lord God. Oh, we glorify you that you are our refuge and our hiding place. There is none like you in all the earth. We thank you, Lord, that you satisfy us with long life and you show us your salvation. Oh, we glorify you, Lord, this morning. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word that you watch over to perform it. We magnify you that your word shall not return unto you void, but it shall accomplish what it was set forth to do to heal, to deliver, to set free in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that we are wealth and riches shall be in our house in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, and we declare healing in this place in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that we may have came in one way, but we will leave a different way, praise God. We will leave, Father God, with minds renewed and hearts turned over to you, Lord God. We thank you and we magnify you this morning, Lord, ushering in, Father God, the kingdom of your dear son. We glorify you and we give you praise right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for eyes have not seen and ears have not heard of the wondrous works that will be birthed forth through this ministry in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that there will never be a building big enough to house the vision that you have for new beginnings. So we glorify you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are a beacon. You are using us as a beacon of hope for all those to look upon that they will see you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, and we magnify your name, for it is the love of God that will cause those to come to repentance. So we thank you on this Mother's Day, Lord God, that sons and daughters, Father God, will come back to you this day, Lord God. We thank you that families will be renewed this day, Lord God, that they will be restored this day, Lord God. Oh, we glorify you, Father God, for this is the day that you have made. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you saw fit to wake us up this morning. Oh, we glorify you that we have an opportunity to praise your name. 
Oh, we thank you, Father God, that the meditation of our hearts and the words of our mouth may be found acceptable in your sight this morning, dear God. Oh, we glorify you this morning, Lord Father. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. For you are the God that was, the God that is, and the God that is to come. So we wait patiently on you, Lord God, for you forever cha you for change not, Lord God. Oh, we thank you that this is the confidence, Father God, that he that begun a good work in us will continue it right up into the day of Jesus Christ. So we honor you this morning, Lord God. We give you praise and we bless your wonderful name. We glorify you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. We give you praise this morning. We magnify your name above every name. We thank you, Lord, for you loved us when we were unlovable. Oh, we thank you that you sought after us when we were not seeking you, Lord God. Oh, we thank you that you are the definition of never failing, never faltering, never ending love. And we glorify you this morning. Oh, we give you praise, Lord God. What an honor and a privilege it is to be loved by you. What an honor and a privilege it is to be able to share the good news of your gospel. Thank you, Lord God. We give you glory in this place. We give you honor in this place. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for who you are. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for who you calls us to be. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and we give you praise right now in the name of Jesus. We say this place is filled to the full, to the overflow. We thank you, Lord God, that there will never be a building big enough. Oh, we glorify and give you praise, Lord God, that we will come, Father God, with praise on our lips, Lord God. We will come, Father God, with praise in our hearts, Lord God. Oh, we thank you in the name of Jesus, Father God, for you are everything that we need. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. We thank you that you are Jehovah Nisi. You are our banner. We glorify you that you are Jehovah Shalom. You are the God of all peace. We thank you that you, Father God, are El Shaddai. You are a God that is more than enough. We thank you that you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end, Lord God. Oh, we thank you, Father God, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, we glorify you, Lord God, that you are the bright and morning star, Lord God. Oh, we glorify you this morning that you are the rose of Sharon, Lord God. Oh, we thank you and we give you praise that you are Jehovah Tiskanu, Lord God. Oh, we thank you and we magnify your name, Father God, for that everything that must bow from heaven, earth and under the earth to that name. So we thank you, Father God, for all that you are, Lord God. You are the all-breasted one, Lord. And we say that everyone that comes in will be able to sup from you, Lord, and receive what they need this day, Father God. And we give you praise. If you believe that God is all you need him to be this morning, shout hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She said, if you know that God is everything you need, give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All I need is him. Glory to God. But good morning, new beginnings. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And those of you all that are watching us by Facebook, to you, happy Mother's Day and good morning. Anybody ready to praise the Lord today? Hallelujah. Psalms 92 says, it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. We're going to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery and upon the harp with the solemn sound for thou lord has made me glad through thy work i will triumph in the works of thy hand oh lord how great are thy works and thy thoughts are very deep 
that's enough right there to give him glory just because it's a good thing to do so before they strike a chord before they play a drum we ought to open up our mouths and say thank you lord for you are good and your mercy endures forever hallelujah there is a praise that cannot be contained and no matter what in every situation i will bless the lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth hallelujah because i know he's good yay glory to god come on let's celebrate today there is a praise there is a praise If I try to contain it, it would just take over me. For all that you've done, all that you are, you're the righteous one. So with my hands, I'm going to lift my voice. And I will say, If I try to contain it, it would just take over me. All that you've done, all that you are, you're the righteous one. So with our hands up, raise. We're going to lift our voice. And I will say, Hallelujah.
will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth forever I will And all that is within me, bless his holy name. You all look like you were just getting warmed up. You look like you were just getting into it. We got to give you another opportunity. Hey! Let's give him glory in this place. Let's lift our voices and exalt him. Let's boast upon our God, for he is good. Hey! Forever! You ought to bless the Lord forever and ever. I will in good times and bad times. I will forever and ever. I will. Hallelujah! Come on, they give him another clap of praise. Clap your hands, all ye people. Give him the glory. He's worthy of the honor. Yes, he is. Oh, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Give him glory. Bless his holy name. I will, I will, I will, I will. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord with the fruit of your lips. Give him a praise because he's worthy. Give him a praise because he's glorious. Give him a praise because he's awesome. He's a faithful God. He's true and he's from everlasting to everlasting. We bless you, Lord. We glorify you, God. We let the whole world know that you are our God. And above you there is no other. Beside you there is no other. And we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you because you are so faithful. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. It is he that has made us glad. Hallelujah, and we'll bless him at all times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in our mouths. Hallelujah. Come on and just bless the Lord. Sing unto him a new song. Mm -hmm. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Hallelujah. We glorify you, God. High and lifted up. Come on, come on, just worship, just worship. Hallelujah, we worship you.
For he has delivered me Delivered me from all fear And he Upon a rock, and I will not be moved. I will not be moved. I'll say of the Lord, You are my shield, my strength, my portion, my deliverer. My shelter, my shelter, strong tower, strong tower I'm very present I'm help very in time of need. Yes, hallelujah. You're all of this and more. I will bless the Lord. And I will trust him at all times. I will trust him at all times. All times. He has delivered me. Thank you, Lord. From all fear. On the solid, the solid rock, yeah. And I will not be moved. I will not be moved. And I'll say of the Lord, yeah. You are my You are my strength. My portion. You provide everything I need, and you deliver. No one else but you. Who have I in heaven but you? Who have I in heaven but you? There is none I desire beside you.
in heaven in time of need. Hallelujah. Who else can I run to? Who else can I trust but Thee, O oh God? Hallelujah. You're all I need. You are all we need, God. Yes. A very present help. A very present help. We present help in time of need. We bless you, Lord. We thank you that you are very present help in time of need. You are faithful. You are always with us, God. No one said that we would never have challenges. But oh God, as your children, we never go through alone. You are always with us. True and faithful, God. Yes, you are. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on and give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. hallelujah. God is good. I know you can do better than that. The Bible says that the Lord is a very present help. Hallelujah. In the time of trouble. Hallelujah. What you just heard them saying is coming out of Psalms chapter 46 and verse 1 where God tells us that he is our strength. Hallelujah. He is a fortress. Hallelujah. He is a shelter. He's a strong tower that the righteous can run into and they are safe. Hallelujah. Everybody knows that we have trouble. Trouble come. Jesus said in Psalm and over in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 33, John chapter 16 and verse 33 he said in this world we will have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world he is here hallelujah somebody give him praise he's a very present help hallelujah glory to God I'm thankful unto the Lord I'm thankful to the Lord because I have been in that place of trouble when my back was against the wall. I don't know if anybody else been there. Hallelujah. I couldn't go forward and I couldn't go backwards and tears were running down my face. But all of a sudden, hallelujah, I got a revelation that God was right there. Hallelujah. And he strengthened me. And here I am today. Praise in his name. Glory to God. He is a very present help. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we just worship him this morning. Hallelujah. I could hardly stand still. <laughs> oh, the anointing. Amen. That in that words, you need to make that declaration that he is a very present help. Hallelujah. And you know what? You don't have to call far because he's right on the inside. Hallelujah. He's just a prayer away. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm not the preacher today. Amen. Pastor Leslie Wright is the preacher. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And she's ready with the word of God. But I'd just like to welcome everyone this morning here to New Beginnings. Amen. We are so grateful on behalf of our pastors, Pastor Wright and Pastor Leslie. And you may be seated. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Pardon my enthusiasm. I'm excited today. Not just because it's Mother's Day, amen. I mean, you know, we don't celebrate Mother just on one day. Glory to God, amen. I have to call my children in for counsel if that happens. But anyway, I want to welcome all of you here today and those that are joining us by Facebook Live. Welcome to New Beginnings, amen. We are celebrating Mother's Day today, amen, and we celebrate all the mothers out there here at New Beginnings. So on behalf of Pastor Wright and Pastor Leslie, we would uh, like to welcome you, amen. And now, if do we uh, have any uh, first-time guests, if you would please stand. 
first time guest, if you're visiting with us for the first time, we want to acknowledge you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. At this time, you are receiving a first time guest packet. Amen. We want to welcome you again to New Beginnings. Amen. Uh, We're so glad that you came out today. We don't believe that you are here by accident. We believe that it was in the will of God that you would be here today. If you'll open up that packet, insert it inside, there is a welcome from our pastors. Amen. On one side and on the other side, there's a little small note card. We'll ask you to complete that card it's in, and its entirety. That card tells us a little bit about you, who you are, and where you've come from. And someone will be calling you back later on on to officially welcome you to New Beginnings. Again, we thank you for coming and invite you to come back again as soon as possible. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Glory to God. Well, to, uh, we have just a couple of announcements. We want you to know that our next in-person service is going to be June the 5th and the 12th. Amen. June the 5th and 12th. So you're invited to come back. We are having services twice a month now, but it will be moving. But we are gradually, gradually uh, segueing into uh, our full services. So you're invited to come back. But I also want you to know you probably received a card like this when you came into the sanctuary today. And this is letting you know that we are having an M person service church dedication hallelujah glory to god we're so excited about that and uh we are thankful to the lord that he's allowed us to have a new place to worship in so we invite you to come back on june the 4th and the 5th at 11 o'clock well june the 5th at 11 o'clock a.m and then on the 4th also at 11 o'clock a.m. We will be having our uh, church, that'll be our dedication weekend. We have guest speakers coming, and you can see that, uh, Pastor Keith and Renee Eccles, amen, out of uh, Pennsylvania, Delaware Valley. They are coming uh, to uh, bless us. And also Pastor Henry and Connie Healy from Kissimmee, Florida, amen. Great weekend. Invite all your family and friends to come out and worship with us and let's thank God for what the great things that he has done for us. Amen. Praise God. Oh, at this time, amen, we're going to ask, uh, we have a special presentation and we'd like to ask Pastor Leslie to come to the stage. Amen. Praise God. Come on, you guys can do better than that. Our first lady, our spiritual mother. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are so grateful and thankful to the Lord for Pastor Leslie. Amen. As you know, if you have been a visitor here at this church or um, you have been uh, a member here, you already know her. Amen. You know that she loves people. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. She's always trying to mother me, and I'm older than she is, but I let her be my mama. <laughs> and I obey too. Praise, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> but anyway, I obey. But we want to just uh, wish you a very uh, special Mother's Day today. And I just want to say this: I was reading in the scripture, and I'm not going to preach. I'm going to be just short. I was reading in the scripture in Second Timothy chapter two and verse twenty, which says that in a great house there are vessels of honor. Uh, some are silver and gold and some are wood, amen. But I like to say that God has blessed our ministry with a spiritual mother and she's great, one of great honor, amen. She knows how to teach us, she knows how to chastise us and it's all done in love. It's so much love you don't know you spanked. I have moved out of her presence. I said, I believe I just got spanked but I don't feel it. <laughs> Amen. But guess what? She, she knows how to do that. And Pastor Leslie, we want you to know that we honor you today. And we have some special gifts for you today. And that's not all. Uh, we're going to ask uh, those responsible for bringing that. Uh, Minister Dorian is going to come up and, and we are going to give you that. But we also uh, want you to know that uh, not only do we honor you, we love you very, very much. <laughs> we love you very, very much. And, and since you have, uh, the day I met you, uh, 
Well, I'm not going to talk about the day I met her because. <laughs> but anyway, since the day that uh, she grew on me, let me just say that. I love her so very much. Been such a blessing to all of our families here. And we want you to know that not only do we love you, God loves you best. And God wants the best for you. And the best is yet to come. Amen. Praise God. So we have something a little special for you here today. We have some goodies inside the bag. <laughs> One of us children and all the rest of y'all. Um, don't be moved by how small that bag is because good things come in small bags. Amen. We want to bless you and we're going to let Dora, you need something. Did you say something? Children's Church, they wanted to make sure you knew they loved you big. <laughs> So this is from Children's Church. They loved you big, and we all loved you best. You are a wonderful first lady, the epitome of what it means to be a first lady and a woman of God. And we thank God for your example every day. But on this day, we want to honor you publicly with these tokens. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay, wait just a minute. Also, I'd just like to, for you guys to, uh, the congregation to know, if you want to bless Pastor Leslie on this Mother's Day, she not asking for nothing. She ain't tell me go up there and ask God. She ain't say that. I just want you to know to honor her. You can bless her. And when we do our offerings, you can complete your offering envelope. Amen. And put a special blessing in there and just put on their special offering. Put Pastor Leslie's name on there. Or you can cash out the ministry. And when you put in that little note there, amen, uh, you can put in there, you know, for Pastor Leslie's honoring her for Mother's Day. Amen. That's what all my children did. Uh, it just went off and they didn't give me no card. But because money answers all things. Amen. I can buy a card. Come on now. Uh, but be a blessing to her. Amen. Praise God. We're going to ask Pastor to come up at this time. Let's give Pastor a hand. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. It's a wonderful day to worship the Lord. My goodness. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And first of all, we want to honor all the mothers here today. In fact, we're going to ask all mothers just to stand up right now. And then we're going to do some more honoring at the end of service. Let's give them all a hand clap. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Amen. Come on. We can do better than that. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I tell you, God is good all the time. And we'll have some more to say to you a little bit later on so you may be seated. Amen. Uh, honey, uh, here's the first lady here, guys. And boy, we love you so dearly. And... Uh, Man, well, where do I start? I'm going to keep it short because we want to give you all of the time to preach. Amen. Honey, you've been so much to me. And, and just to put up with me, that's you. Now, y'all supposed to laugh at that point, right? It, uh, just to put up with any old man. I guess I ain't just any old man, but, but it's something to put up with a man. And, and, and especially a leader. Uh, listen, yeah, I don't believe in losing. Have I ever lost? Yes, I have. But you know the only reason why I lost because we the clock ran out. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So I'm I'm I come from a strong leadership background. I was trained by a strong leader. I'm a strong guy. Know what I want and I go for it. And honey, for you just to put up with me, I just want you to know you something else, girl. I love you so much. Love you more dearly now than I ever have. Does that mean I didn't love you back then? No. I just love you even more today, honey. You're very special to me. You're such an honorable woman, a woman of virtue. And, uh, honey, I don't know where I would be without you. In fact, I don't even want to think about that. I've always told you, when that time should come, that uh, we're close to 120, as the Word of God promises us. It's more than just three score and ten. I know what the Bible says, all right? I might not know much about other things, but... Bible talks about three score and ten. But then there's a greater promise in the book of Genesis that talks about 120. I've always told you that I want to leave before you leave. And that's very important. 
Uh, maybe, maybe we'll lead together, right? <laughs> but I ain't going to leave here until I'm at least, what, 119? Maybe you didn't, maybe you hit 120, but I just couldn't live without you, baby. And I, I appreciate you that much. And you've taught me how to love. Uh, uh, me being the baby in the family, it was six of us. And I was a selfish son of a gun, you know, and I guess because I was the baby. But you have taught me how to love. And honey, you just... It's just unbelievable, girl, and I just want you to know that, and I really mean that from my heart, that you're beautiful. You're beautiful to me inside out, first of all, spiritually. That's what really attracted me to you, even though I was looking at other parts of you. <laughs> and that was back in high school. I used to, I guess, today they would call it stalking. I used to watch her from a distance. My locker was down at the far end, and her locker was right up there. Lord Jesus, and Lord, if you just give me an opportunity. And that opportunity came up. She was dating some, somebody. And I was dating somebody as well, you know. But, but that day came up, and a good friend of mine knew her and said, Kev, you ain't going to believe it. That girl is available now. I said, ooh, you talking about Leslie Diane Hughes? She said, yeah, that girl's available. It, it couldn't have been the day after she broke up with the guy. It might have been during. I don't know. But, uh, but a new young man moved on in. <laughs> Amen. And I've, I've been in love with you ever since, girl. And I know we'll forget on our very first date, boy, I was just too serious. I couldn't have been no more than, what, 19? Lord, have mercy. Just, I was one of them Pentecostal boys, you know. You get married at 12 <laughs> because, you know, the, the Lord might come back. And I'm going to leave the rest of it alone, right? Uh, but, you, you know, girl, I've been chasing you ever since. And uh, you, 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 I guess I'm a knight in shining armor. Ladies, now, you know. <laughs> now, he might have said he was stalking, but we know what we're doing, don't we? We know they looking, so you put a little bit of here, there, and a little bit of there, there. You know what I'm saying? Give him something to look at. He didn't even know he was getting baited at the time. I was baiting him on. Well, let me finish talking. Then you can talk. She just took over. And, uh, you know, she didn't change my name. Whatever she want my name to be from day to day. I, that's me, Billy. What's today? Steven. Well, what is it tomorrow, Kevin? I don't know. The next day, Sean. Yeah, honey, you just didn't just took over my world, girl. And I, ooh, Lord, what would I do without you? I ain't doing nothing without you. So I just want you to know on this day, on behalf of the kids and I, the family, we, we just want you to know we love you. We deeply appreciate you. And you're not the normal first lady. Most first ladies, and God bless them, and that makes them special. They sit in a corner and do nothing. And that's okay, but not you, girl. You are everywhere, and we just want you to know we love you and appreciate you for being everywhere because it takes a woman to really make a home. The man can buy the home, but that woman got to make that house. And you have made new beginnings, what it is. I, I bought it, but you making it, girl. And I just want you to know that. And I'm not an insecure guy at all, by no means. And you're not an insecure girl. I just want you to know, girl, you keep making it what God wants it to become. The Lord, he'll give me the vision, then you come and make it all happen. Thank you so much. We love you. All right, all right guys. I didn't say it enough. Honey, we got some more flowers for you, uh, which is very fitting. Let me get to the side here. Uh, my wife likes plants. Flowers is great. She'll say, honey, I, I like the flowers. You can give me four dozens of roses. That's cute and that's fine, but she likes plants. So we got you both of them, honey, and we just want you to know we love you. You're the best first lady. I mean, everybody got their own first ladies, but this is the first lady of this house. We thank you and we love you. Finish? Okay, then you get up. Mm -hmm. Where's, who's next? Is that it? Okay. 
What minutes are low? That's what I'm looking for. All right. Okay, that's it. Okay. Y'all tell me what's going on. I told them I ain't doing nothing today. I'm going to sit back and relax for once. Amen. Praise God. So at this time, where is, uh, where is, Lord have mercy. Oh, there she is right there. <laughs> Lord, you're quiet. We love you. We appreciate you. But I got to say something. Uh, where's Brother Stanley at? Carolyn, you did a good job. Did you dress your husband today? He's got on a... Uh, <laughs> But Stanley, I love that color, man. What is that, peach? And so he's matching your peach, right? I, I, uh, Stanley, I, I thought I'd pick with you. Uh, Stanley, I thought I'd pick with you. Stanley has been with me forever. He goes, him and his wife go way back. I mean, way back. And I, I, I don't normally do this, just pick folk out. But there's a reason. I want you to know we love you guys. Now, you know, we love everybody in the building, but I, I, I just follow the Holy Spirit. Oh, I want you to know we appreciate you, too, and love you. I, I knew it was up. Y'all just celebrated 34 years of holy matrimony. How about, let's give them a hand clap. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Now, for some, somebody in here might say, why didn't you celebrate mine? Now, there you go. I, I bind you, Satan. I told you, I don't normally do this, but I just feel led to. What you guys know, we love you. We appreciate everything about you. Your time, talent, treasure, everything you do. Your spirit, your anointing, and the best is yet to come. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. And your dear son, why don't you wave your hand over that boy? Caleb. Caleb. Good to see Caleb. He peeked in here. He snuck in here today. I saw him. And I want to say this as well. All my spiritual sons and daughters in here, I, hey, I'll never forget you guys. I know we go back, what, 10, 15 years ago or more. A lot of y'all didn't grew up now and all grown, married, and can on. I want you guys to know, to all my spiritual sons and daughters, we love you guys. You mean everything to us. You, you've, you've come home to daddy. Yeah. You never walk away from who you are mother and father is. I don't care who they are and what's going on or whatever. They'll always be your mother and father. We thank you for coming home. Noreen, I think I'm done now. I, I, I think I got it, y'all. That's, uh, I'm not used to not doing nothing. Oh, but uh, I, I don't forget about this here, guys. On, on that Saturday, what is it, June the 4th, we're having a healing revival. Pastor Healy, I'm telling you, he flows in healing. That healing anointing is strong on them. If you got anybody sick with, I don't care, cancer, whatever, I don't care what it is, you make sure they get here. Don't come up then Sunday tomorrow. We'll get, I ain't doing nothing. I told you to come on Saturday because there is a special healing anointing. There is a special healing anointing that you need to get into. That's very important. If you believe in God for healing, you don't want to miss that Saturday at 11 o'clock. Pastor Healy, okay? Then on Sunday, we're going to turn Pastor Echoes loose, and you're going to hear from the Holy Ghost that day. I can't wait. I mean, these are people who have been in the ministry for over 30 years. Proven ministries. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you get a brochure, and we'll be shooting these out in the mail as well. Amen. Let me. Get, my wife got a word from the Lord today, y'all. I'm telling you. She was spilling the beans on me in the car. And, you know, I tried to add a little bit to it, too. She said, honey, now I got to get what the Lord done told me. I said, well, we're going to let you get what the Lord told you. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Well, this time, Noreen and our praise team, come forth. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Happy Mother's Day again to all the mothers. Today, as we get ready to minister, I want to invite you all to... Look at number six. I know we come up and we minister songs and we get ready for the word, but this song today is real special. It's real special to us, it's ministered to us as we were preparing, but we thought it was very befitting for Mother's Day. 
you know, once we have children, you know, we think about, you know, they're so cute, the little babies, what are we gonna dress them in? All the little toys we're gonna buy them. But the most important thing we can do for our children is dedicate them to God. The most important thing we can do for our families is make sure that we declare as for me and my house, we gonna serve the Lord and to bless them and speak blessings over them. In number six, verse around 22, 23, there's something called the Aaronic, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, blessing. We've heard it. And what was happening is God told Noah to tell Aaron and his sons, who were the priests of the time, to bless the children of Israel. And as you put the name of the Lord upon the children of Israel, I'm going to confirm that with blessings. And it reads, speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying on his wise, this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And I will, I will, I will bless them. As a mother, I have found that by the time I get ready to talk to my children about something, the world has already inundated them. And as Minister Logan says so often, the devil is a low down dirty dog. And he's using all kinds of tactics to get at our children. He wants the Christian family to fall. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't like Christian marriages at all because when the two come together, oh my God. But now there's really an onslaught of trying to get at our young people. So today we want to sing the blessing over the mothers, over the fathers, because we can't do it alone, over the children and their children and their children to a thousand generations. Know that you can do that and know that he will confirm it with blessings.
receive, we believe. Amen. upon you and your family and your children and their children and their children and their children come on and help me say may his favor be upon and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you to a And your children, and their children.
children bless and the children and the children they promise go before you and behind you beside you all around you oh, and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going when you're crying when you rejoice it he is for you he is for you he is for you god is for you god is for you god is for you god is for you yes he is yes he is receive the blessing children that have not been born yet. Receive the blessing. Receive the blessing. Amen. No devil in hell can change it. No devil in hell can change it. Declare you will have peace. 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 Ooh. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord bless you and keep. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! That song is called The Blessing. You know, we don't, uh, we don't believe in the blessing like we should. But the blessing is very real. And when you, mama and daddies, are on your knees praying for your children, binding the devil, 
loosing blessings in their lives, praying for your spouse, praying for your family. Let me tell you, that's powerful. Prayers are eternal. They never stop working. I know that I'm standing up here ministering the gospel because of the prayers of my great-grandmother and my grandmother. Let me tell you something. The best thing that you could ever give your child, you might say, my love. Well, your love is only going to take them so far. The best thing you could ever give your child is a relationship with the Lord. I'm going to tell you, my kids is grown now. And the stuff that we put in them when they were younger, they might have gone out and did some things, but baby, that hook was in their jaw. And they could only go so far. And when the rubber met the road, because we gave them the word of God, we gave them the word of God. They saw us living the word. When the rubber met the road, they hit their knees. They didn't go philosophizing. They didn't go trying to depend on their degree. They didn't go trying to get some whatever, this and that, to try to get them out of it. They knew that Jesus was the one that's going to get out of them. Give them Jesus. Children's church, nursery should be full. It should be full of our children. Teaching them line upon line. Precept upon precept. I'm going to tell you something. The best thing that you can give your child is Jesus. A relationship with Jesus. Not just by saying it, but by living it in front of them. I was talking to somebody and they said that uh, a dear friend of ours, and this was years ago, and she, it, as a matter of fact, it was Minister Flossie. So back in the day before Flossie was Minister Flossie, everybody remember Minister Flossie Children's Church? We just saw them in South Carolina a few weeks ago. And back in the day, you know, she wasn't in the church. And so they had a church that would come by and pick up the kids, and she would send their son, Vince. And so one day, Vince said, I don't want to go. She said, why don't you want to go? He said, I don't want to go to church by myself. In other words, don't just send me. You come with me and live it with me. So the best thing, my mother said one more thing to me, and then I'm going to get into the word. See, all this encompasses the blessing. All this encompasses the blessing. My mom said to me, she said, you know what? She said, I just, I just, just, my heart is full. I said, yeah, mom. What? She said, you and, and, and Kevin had to preach the word in your living room for two years. In your living room, in your bedroom, and your kids heard you preaching the gospel in the house, in their house. They heard you getting up, praying, and preaching, and staying steadfast before God. She said, let me tell you something. That has done something for them that they never will forget. So my question to you is this. What is your children going to be able to remember about you in your home when it comes to the Lord. Are they going to remember you taking them to the house of God? Making sure they get spiritually enriched. Are they going to hear you in your prayer closet? Praying before him. Interceding. Using your faith. Are they going to remember those things? Because when they get old. Those things will come back up on them when the rubber meets the road. And they either going to hit their knees like they saw you do and train them or they going to go the opposite direction. I ain't mean for y'all to get quiet. I thought y'all be shouting and praising God. Ain't that great? Great to be able to live it before our children. It's time to wake up, church. Two years, Satan has rocked the church to sleep. Rocked us to sleep spiritually. 
rocked us to sleep, and he has been wreaking havoc. But this message I'm about to preach to you, he going to have to repay everything that he stole. Repayment time is right now. How many of y'all ready for some repayment? You going to get back my, you going to get back my peace? You going to get back my money? You going to get back my health? I'm going to get a better job? You going to give everything back that you took from me? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. We praise you and we thank you for this wonderful and blessed day, this wonderful Mother's Day. Lord, bless each and every mama here. Bless each and every, mo- uh, every, every woman that even she might not have bore children, but she's still a mother to somebody. Bless each and every one, Lord. Lord, let them know the importance of them in the lives of their loved ones. Lord, giving them strength and courage and, and resolve to stand steadfast in faith. Lord, use me the way you see fit to minister to the hearts and lives of your people. Lord, I thank you that a word spoken in due season, how sweet it is. I sit alongside my brothers and sisters growing up in the things of God as Holy Spirit takes over this service and uses me in the way he sees fit. Don't look at me, but look to Jesus. Thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you may be seated. I think I'm So, you know, I'll be 60 years old this year. Y'all better say she don't look it. But anyway, (laughs) I'll be 60 years old this year. In all my years, I have never experienced what we have experienced these last two years. This is something different. This is, this is, what is this? What is going on here? There's some crazy stuff here. If somebody would have told us that in, in, in 2019, at the end of 2019, we would be walking around with masks on and having to quarantine and do all this crazy stuff, we would say, you lying. But three months later, that's exactly what happened. And Satan thinks he is ruling He thinks that he has got it made in the shade. But I'm here to tell you, he ain't. How about that? He ain't got it made in the shade. He ain't ruling here. How many born-again believers do I have here who know who they are in Christ is going to take a stand in the name of Jesus and stand for your family, stand for your church, stand for your loved ones? Amen. Amen. So today... We're going to be ministering on Peter, the example of restoration. Y'all might say Peter. (laughs) Peter, the example of restoration. And we're going to walk it out. Y'all mind walking with me? Let's see where the Holy Spirit takes us. And so we first find Peter in Luke chapter 5. Turn with me to Luke chapter 5. And I'm going to... um, I'm going to paraphrase a lot of this so that I can land the ship on the restoration part. Is that all right? right. How many of y'all love Jesus here? Oh, y'all don't sound like y'all love Jesus. I got to have a lot of feedback. How many of y'all love Jesus up in here? Woo! All right, I'm good now. I think I'm in the right place. All right, I didn't know. Had to get the oil out and splash you up real good. Okay, so <laughs> Peter, an example of restoration. So let, here's where we find in Luke chapter 5 where Peter first meets Jesus. How many of you all remember when you first met Jesus? I mean, really met him, not like, you know, but really met Jesus where he changed your life, revolution. How many of y'all want y'all to think back on those times? I want you to remember that. So in 1 Peter, I mean, sorry, uh, Luke chapter 5, in verse 1, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. 
Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. So here we find Peter actually sowing his business or his, 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 his resource. He, he sold into the ministry of Jesus by allowing him to get in the boat. How many of y'all sow into the house of God? Don't keep your hand down. We don't want nobody to be lying. Okay, so, <laughs> so here is Peter sowing into Jesus' ministry. In verse 4, he says, Now, when he had left speaking, when he was done, he said to Simon, Don't you know you can't sow into the house of God? You can't sow into what God is doing and not get blessed. Y'all must don't know that. Let me say that on this side. How many of y'all know that when you sow into the house of God, when, you're in, uh, when you are, are, are on a, into what God is doing, you're going to get blessed? Y'all don't know that over here. How many of y'all know <laughs> that when you sow into the house of God, when you're in God's, uh, going in God's plan, you're going to get blessed? Uh, they, they know it more than y'all. And so... Uh, He said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. Nets for a draught. He gave him direction. Do you know that when you sow into the house of God, when you're in God's plan, he will begin to give you directions on where the wealth is, where the blessings is. He will open up secrets and tell you different things that nobody else knows. He will give you witty inventions and all kinds of things on how to do things that nobody else might be doing. Ah, let down your nets for a draw. Now Simon answering, saying unto the him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. I think that's where a whole lot of people are right now. Lord, I've been trying this and trying that, and I ain't got nothing. How many, don't put your hand up on this one because we don't want nobody to know your business. But just in your heart. How many of you here have been toiling all the night and ain't took nothing? It seemed like it's dried up. It seemed like you ain't got nothing. It seemed like the, 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 the buffalo is riding the Indian. It seemed like no matter what you do, things just are not working out well. Hey, 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 we did this all night. I'm a professional fisherman. I know what I'm doing. I know how to fish. You know how to preach. I know how to fish. And I'm telling you, ain't nothing here. This hole is dry. Oh, that's just where God want to do his miracle, right where the dry hole is at. Ah, that place that you thought was dry, that place that you thought would not produce, God told you to let down your net right there. Oh, no, nah, Lord. Everybody saying this ain't right. Everybody saying this, this city ain't good. Everybody saying this ain't going to happen here. He said, let down your net right there. Nothing. Nevertheless, he said, Peter said, okay, I'll tell you what, I done did all I'm going to do, but I'm going to just put it on you. Nevertheless, at thy word. I like that, what, that message that pastor preached, put the pressure on the promises. He said, nevertheless, no matter what I know, no matter what I've seen, no matter what happened in the past, no matter what's going on, I'm going to take you at your word. That's putting the pressure on the promises. That's what you need to do for that dry hole that you got right there. You need to put the pressure on the promises. Lord, you told me to come here. You told me to do this. So I'm just going to take you at my word. I'm not going to look at my experience. I'm not going to look at what nobody else is saying. I'm not going to look at what is going on. I'm going to take you at your word. See, this what has been going on with this here uh, 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 pandemic and everything. We've been looking at it too much. We've been looking at the devastation. We've been looking at what has been taken away from people, what has been doing to people. But we need to start taking him at his word. We need to not look at what we see. We need to not look at what we know. We need to not look at what somebody else is saying. But what, Lord, what did you say? You said I'm the healed and I am set free, that I am protected. You said all those things. I'm going to take you at your word. 
Because let me tell you something. I know y'all good. I know you're real good. I know you know how to follow directions. But anybody can get God. Anybody can get God. In other words, anybody can get toe up from the flow up. Don't think you that good. And you need to depend on a higher power to get you and your family through. Because there's a crack somewhere. Believe that. And no matter how good you are, Satan can get through it. But if you take him at his word. <laughs> ha! I let down my net. Wait a minute. He said net. He said net. So he said, I, I let down my net. I halfway obey you. I ain't going to ask y'all to raise your hand of folks that's halfway obeying God. Because I believe all of us have put our hands up on that. How many halfway obeying God? Put your hands up. All right, put it back down. And, <laughs> and when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. When he followed the word of the Lord, it brought super abundance to him. So much so that he could not handle it. He was not prepared for it. And his net break. That's what's that telling us? It's telling us that he wants to bring super abundance to you. He wants to give you the supernatural overflow. But is your net going to break because you're not ready? When your net breaks, you're going to lose some of it, if not all of it. You got to be ready for it. That ain't even in my message. Y'all got me all way over here like this here. And so this miracle, this, this experience that Peter had, it revolutionized his life. So much so that he left his occupation, left his belongings, left everything to follow Jesus. Jesus said, I'm going to make you fisher of men now, Peter. And his partners, James and John. So here's Peter. On the ride of his life. And Peter, and, and I'm just going to summarize this because I want to land the ship at a certain point. But Peter ended up being very close to Jesus. He ended up being in the inner circle. You had the 12, but he was part of the three. The ones that Jesus would take with him for special occasions. He ended up being very close to Jesus. Best friend. How many of y'all would love to be the best friend of Jesus? Ooh. Where he say to all, the, all of us, y'all sit over here, but you three come with me. That's what Peter was a part of. Peter was with Jesus when he went to Jairus' house. And he told the rest of them, y'all stay out here, but Peter, James, and John, you come here, I'm about to raise this girl up. Peter was with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration where Jesus told the rest of them to stay. He said, Peter, James, and John, you come here with me up this mountain. And when he got to the top of the mountain, he was, they saw Jesus talking to Moses and Elijah. And then the glory came down on that mountain. Oh, my, my, my. See the experiences that Peter is having? And he said, they heard the voice of the Lord saying, this is my dear son in whom I'm well pleased. Peter had this kind of experience with Jesus. Oh, man. You got to be feeling awful special. Wouldn't you be? I know some of y'all, man, y'all be feeling. I wouldn't even be able to say y'all name right now if that would happen to y'all. <laughs> y'all got to feel awful special. Peter had another experience that James and John didn't have. 
Peter had an experience of walking on the water with Jesus. Nobody else had that experience. Even though it was an open invitation when he, Peter, they had the nerve. <laughs> Here Jesus come walking to them on water. They got scared and then the Lord said, don't be afraid, it's me. And then Peter had the nerve to say, hey, if it's you, can you tell me to come on out there? He had the nerve to think he can do what Jesus did. See, when you're around all that, you'll start thinking different. You'll start thinking you can do what Jesus did. See what I'm saying? Who does that? Yeah, Jesus, you can walk on it, but me. And so when he said, when, they, when he said, bid me come, he didn't say come, Peter. He said just one word, come. That one word, that was an open invitation to everybody in the boat. Whoever want to get out the boat, come on and get out the boat and walk with me. Come on and have an experience nobody else would have. But let me tell you something. When you get to the supernatural like that, when you get to something like that, it's going to be only a few that will get out the boat. Most folks want to stay safe. Stop looking around to see who else is getting out the boat. Because you're going to miss the supernatural. Trying to make sure it's all right. I'm getting out the boat, baby. He said, come. Peter walked on water with Jesus. Oh, man, what an experience. Can you see how Peter had to feel so sure in their relationship? So sure in their, their, their camaraderie. So special. Till when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He told the, he took, he took, the other disciples was there, but then Peter, James, and John, he took further with him. And he allowed them to see him in agony. He allowed them to see his feelings, what was going on with him. Peter, James, and John in the garden. But wait a minute, what happened before the garden? Let me back up. I told you I'm kind of summarizing this up. They had dinner. They called it the Last Supper. And he said, somebody, y'all going to all leave. You going to all get up out of here after a while and run from me. Peter said, not me. I, ain't, I, I would never. He's so sure in their relationship. He's so sure in, 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 in their camaraderie. He so sold out in his heart. It would never be me, Lord. How many of y'all said it would never be me, Lord? I would never do that. I would never say that. I would never. So sure in his relationship. The Lord said, yeah, yeah, you will, Peter. Before the cock crows twice, you're going to deny me thrice, three times. Three times you're going to deny me, buddy. Oh, no, not me, not me, not me. So can you remember that? You know, he, he's so sure in that. He, he's had all these experiences with Jesus. He, he has special experience nobody else had he 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 left everything for him he he he's his best man he's he's the one that would he's like his sergeant at arms he's he's the one that would stand up and say things he would speak out he was bold he's the one that knew he was the Christ the son of the living God he said, who do you say that I, who do men say that I am some say that you are Elias and some say that you are Jeremiah, he said, but who do you say that I am? Peter, only one broke up. Oh, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood ain't revealed yet to you, Peter. You're a rock, baby. That's revelation. Peter, oh, no, I would never forsake you. I would never leave you. I would Never. You see, there's something about that word never that you got to be careful of. You see, never is really not usually 
on, well, I'm going to say, never is not on the, on the lips of a humble person. Because a humble person knows that I can fall at any time. And so I need to stay bowed down. <laughs> oh, never is, a, is, 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 is something else. Uh-huh. And so here, Peter's in the garden. Here comes Judas with a band of soldiers with swords and spears and torches. Now, when they say band, you don't get it. It had to be about 600 to 800 soldiers. 600 to 800 soldiers that came to get Jesus. This is about to be a situation. And Peter, being the sergeant at arms, being the person that he is, being the I'm going to protect Jesus, he did what was natural. He started ready to get ready to throw down. How many of y'all would have rather been ready to throw down? Any y'all here would have been ready to throw down when you've seen that and they're trying to come and get your master. Oh, I think we got more than one Peter up in here. Should they could try to come in here and get your pastor? And they coming up in here like that, busting up in here? Ain't hey, many of y'all wouldn't just be sitting there. Y'all be grabbing something to a chair or something. We're going to throw down here today. So Pete, <laughs> Pete picked the sword, cut off the joker's ear. Probably was aiming at his neck. And then the Lord looks at him and say, Peter, put it up. But you know, I could call a legion of angels and wipe, wipe out all mankind. Put it up. This ain't the way we going. Now, the scriptures must be fulfilled. This is not how it's going. Peter, you should have been praying when I told you. I brought you with me to pray. And you, if you would have been praying, you would have understood. Peter, put it up. Peter had to be confused. Now his relationship was in a state of confusion. I tried to protect you, Lord, and you told me to put it up. What do you want me to do? I'm lost. I don't understand. I don't get it. How many of y'all have ever been confused in your relationships? You try to do this, and it, 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 that ain't the right thing to do. You try to do that. That ain't the right thing to do. I'm just confused. I know it's more than me that's been confused in a relationship before. And so, he runs but not too far, Peter began to follow them to see what was going to happen. How many nosy folks we got here that would have been following? <laughs> Behind our bushes. <laughs> Put a little mask on, can't see who I am really. What is going on? I'm confused. I tried to fight. You told me not to fight. I'm, I don't know what to do, Lord. Or are you going to just wipe them clean with them angels you was talking about? I want to see that. Where, what is going on here? He following. And he's seeing them. The way they did him. So then his heart got afraid. He was confused. His heart got stirring. And then he says... A woman, girls come come up to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't you one of them? Oh no, I ain't, I ain't one of them. I know some of y'all done did that before. Don't you know him? No, I ain't never met him before. Wait a minute. I think I seen you with him. I'm sure that, that you was with him. What you what? No, no, it wasn't me. No, it wasn't me. No. Mm -mm. I don't know. I don't know nobody. I just, I'm just right here. I don't know nobody. I don't know nothing. Nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> Third time. Oh, yes, you do. You look like them and you sound like them. You see, when you've been around somebody long enough, you start sounding like them, acting like them. Some people say when I'm up here, I, you say, hey, just like your husband. Y'all sound like, y'all look like, y'all act like. So he said, well, I got I to do something about this here. 
They saying I'm sounding like him. So he just stopped cussing. <laughs> y'all don't know what y'all laughing at. Y'all did that too before. You ain't want to sound like one of them Christians, so you just start cussing. <laughs> Using profanity. And then it happened. The cop crowed or the rooster crowed. And he remembered what Jesus said. How many of you have had a wake-up call like that? You all out there doing your thing and everything, and, and then all of a sudden, something sparks up and reminds you what the Lord told you a long time ago. Didn't the Lord say don't go there? Didn't the Lord say don't do that? Didn't the Lord say don't be around there? Something reminds you, the cock crow. Oh, my, my, my. Now, let's land the ship. John chapter 21. So, can you imagine Peter? The bold one, the one that always had his proclamations, the one that was the leader, the one that was best friends of Jesus, the one that had experiences with the Lord that no one else had, the one that was, I mean, oh my God, Peter, Peter, Peter. Peter went quiet. Peeling was silenced. You find when Peter went to the, to the tomb, you don't hear him saying anything. You find when Peter, when Jesus came into the room where they were and Timothy was saying, I ain't going to believe unless I do these things. You don't see Peter saying anything. Peter is quiet. Peter, what's going on with you? Peter, what is happening? Peter, where you at? Peter, Jesus has risen. Peter, what is happening to you? Peter, why are you not saying anything? Well, Peter missed God and he couldn't get over it. Till it caused him to be silent. Has that ever happened to you? Where you have missed God. You, you just can't believe you did that. You can't just believe that that happened to you. You can't just believe. And you have now gone silent. Hmm, Peter. Where are you, Peter? John 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself again. Now, no, again. So he had showed himself before to him. He showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Canaan in Galilee. And the sons of Zebedee, and that's, that's James and John, and two other of the disciples. And look at what Peter said. Peter said unto them, I'll go a fishing. You know, oftentimes when we miss God, oftentimes when we're disappointed, we go back to what we know. Some of us go back to Egypt, the way we used to talk, the way we used to act. Some of us go to, the, you know, all those different things. He went to familiar place. A place that, that he remembered that caused him great comfort. He, he, I, I, I'm going fishing. Going fishing, Peter, Jesus has shown himself. Why are you going fishing? I'm, I'm going fishing. Some of y'all have, the two years have gone by. Y'all have lost stuff. Things have happened to you. Things have gone on array. And now you have gone fishing. Well, I'm here to tell you it's time to get up. It's time to get back in the game. It's time to finish what he started in you. I go a fishing. They say unto him, we also, look here, don't y'all know when you going to go fishing, other folk going to go with you? I go a clubbing. <laughs> Your friend going to go with you to the club. I go to whatever. Your friend's going to go with you there. I go whatever. We also go with thee. 
And they went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night, wait a minute, they caught nothing. That sounds familiar. Didn't we just read that when Jesus, when he first met Jesus, they went fishing and caught nothing? Oh, God is setting them up and caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood in the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. You know, sometimes we can get so wrapped up in ourselves, so wrapped up in what we, our disappointments, our fears, till we don't even recognize Jesus anymore. We don't, we don't know him. We, we can't hear him. Have you ever been in a place where you, it seemed like you can't hear him? It seemed like you can't feel him anymore because of life's disappointments, because of things that have happened to you, because of what you did and what you didn't do. Maybe something happened to you. Maybe somebody did something to you. Maybe something, life, kicked you in the gut. And you can't hear him or see him anymore. Then Jesus said unto them, children, have ye any meat? They answered and said, no. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast thereof, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Wait a this, wait, what's going on here? Cast it to the right side, and all these fish them came up. Therefore, that disciple which Jesus loved, who was John, said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Sometimes you need a good friend to tell you, Look, look, Lord is talking to you, y'all. The Lord said that to you. How many of y'all got a good friend like that? Wake you up and tell you, Look here, the Lord is talking to you. Listen up. And, and when he said, The Lord, he said, It's the Lord. Peter remembered when he first met him. The Lord will come back to you again like he, when you first met him. He is the restorer. He will restore back to you what the canker worm had eaten. He will come back to you the same way again. But you have to be open to receive him. And so what did Peter do? Now, verse 7, now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt up his fisher's clothes unto him. Because he was butt naked in the doggone boat. Now you don't hit rock bottom, you naked in the boat. You just, run. You just depressed. You pressed down from all sides. You just tow up from the flow up. Peter was tow up from the flow up. But when he heard that second chance, he's a God of a second chance. He's a God of a third chance. He's a God of a fourth chance. He's a God of many chances. He will come to you when nobody else will. He'll come to you when you're least expected. He'll come to you when you're naked in your boat and pressed down from all sides. He'll come to you and say, baby, I'm giving you another chance. Get up. Come on. Baby, I'm giving you another chance, just like I did before. I'm giving you another chance. I'm giving you another chance. How many of you need another chance in life? How many of you need to know that you can do it again? How many of you need to know that God ain't gave up on you? God ain't going to give up on you. He said, I will work with you right up until the day of Jesus Christ. And he did cast himself in the boat into the sea. Peter got out of the boat again. This time he wasn't walking on water. He was there to obey God thoroughly. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from the land, but as it were, 200 cubits, dragged the net with fishes. So Peter got out of the boat. He put on his coat, got out of his boat, and made sure that he wasn't going to miss it this time. 
As soon as they had come to land, they saw a, the fire of coals there. Fish laid upon them and bread. And Jesus said, bring of the fish which thou now caught. Boy, I can go all different kind of angles on that. I ain't got the time. <laughs> Jesus already has some fish there cooking for him. Don't you know you're not going to feed Jesus. Jesus is going to feed you. My, my, my. <laughs> Verse 11. And Simon Peter went up and drew the net to a land full of great fishes, not small ones, big ones, and 153, for all there were so many. Yet, say it with me, was not the net broken. He said, oh, you give me a second chance. This time, the net ain't going to break. I'm going to get out of this boat, and I'm going to make sure it's right. I'm going to make sure I don't lose nothing on this one. Lord, you done come back to me, and you done search me out. How many of you are willing to get out the boat and make sure the net don't break this time? When God tell you to do this and do that, and that he's got this for you, how many of you are willing to get up and do the extra? Get out of the boat. Forget about this depression. I got something I got to do for the Lord. It ain't going to break then. No, 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 it ain't going to break. No, no, no. It ain't going to break. Let me tell you, you're sitting in a not broken net right now. You see this here, church, right here? This is what you call a net not broken. This is supernatural. This is supernatural. And ain't one fish going to get away. Not one. Not one. We're going to do some supernatural stuff up in here. This is a God of a second chance. He's a God of restoration. He restore that which you think you lost and bring back even better. How many of you want better than what you had before? You thought you had top of the line then, but baby, let me tell you, God's got so much more. He's a God of restoration. Oh, yes, he is. He restores. And so then, as it goes down, and Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time. This is the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he has risen from the dead. So when he, when they had died. Jesus said to Peter, can you imagine Peter sitting there looking at Jesus eating his fish? Every time, see, you, you don't get it. Every time Peter would get up in the morning, he was reminded of his failure because the rooster would be crowing. Every time he get up in the morning, <laughs> you deny Jesus. Every time he looked at a rooster, he was an agricultural age. He, he was reminded. But every time he got up and tried to start a new day, every time he tried to get over it, every time he tried to just forget about it, the rooster was crowing. Some of y'all are trying to get over it. Some of y'all are trying to get by it. Some of y'all are trying to put it behind you, but the rooster keeps crowing. The rooster keeps reminding you. You see what they, don't that smell like him? That's the same perfume, same cologne he had. It smells just like him. Remember, you, you gave him 20 years of your life, and now you by yourself, uh-huh, rooster crowing. Remember that house that you had, that house you had? It was nice. You lost that house, uh-huh. Every time you got to drive by here to go to work and look at it, rooster crowing. You know that surgery that you had, that they had to amputate or take something out of you. And, 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 and you feel that little pain once in a while. Rooster crowing. He said, what? I'm trying to start over again, Lord. I'm, 
I'm trying to, 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 to get over this thing. But the rooster keeps crowing in my mind. Then Jesus looks at Simon. And he's saying something especially to him. Just like he's saying something especially to you today. He looked at him and pointed him out. Don't you know the Lord would point you out? Oh, yes, he will. <laughs> he knew that this, this Peter was having a hard time. He, he, he was having a hard time getting over this thing. It, it, I, oh, oh, Lord, I, I obeyed you. I, I brought in the fish. I, I, the net didn't break this time. But this rooster keeps crowing in my mind. Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He's talking to him directly. You got me, agape me, Simon. And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I phileo thee. Ah. And he said unto him, Feed, feed my lambs. You mean tell me, you said, Lord, do you, you asked him, did he agape you, the highest form of love? He comes back with phileo, I friendship love you. And you still want him to feed your lamb? He's still going to use him. Ah! And he said unto him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he said unto them, yea, Lord, agape, lovest thou me? Second time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all know I love you. I, got, I phileo you. He said, Feed my sheep. You still going to use me if I'm not quite there yet? See, you, you're thinking that he can't use you because you, you ain't quite there yet. He'll take whatever you got, baby, and turn it upside down. If that's as high as you can go with phileo, that's just fine. He'll take that and turn it upside down. And before it's over with, you will be agape in him. He'll meet you where you're at. That's right. And he said in him a third time, third, third time, Simon, son of Jonas, agape thou me. And Peter grieved because he said it unto him a third time. This is the third time, Lord, why? Well, third time, thou lovest thou me? And he said in him, Lord, Thou knowest all things. You know all things. Thou knowest that I phileo thee. And Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. He said to him, Simon Peter denied him three times. And he had Simon to confess his love for him three times. And that broke that bond. That broke, that destroyed the rooster in his head. That destroyed that question that he had. Could God use me after this? Will he take me as I am? Will he use me even if I'm not quite there? Yes, he said it three times to him. I'm going to use you right there the way you are to do what I need for you to do. And it broke the bondage that he had so that he could be restored. So much so that on the day of Pentecost, we find Peter again standing up full of the Holy Ghost and making a proclamation. We are not drunk as you suppose, <laughs> but we're filled with the Holy Ghost. Good God Almighty, Peter's back, baby. Peter's back. But the Lord affirmed him with his law. And so, Peter's road to restoration gives us all an example that God is not finished with you. God is, I don't care what you did. I don't care what happened. I don't care what they did to you. I don't care what's going on. God is not finished with you. 
And he wants to restore you today. Every head bowed, every eye closed. So this, this, this is going to be a, just a little bit different than a normal altar call. I believe that when we go to church, we should be going to church to come back out different than when we came in. Amen. Now, we talked about restoration, being restored. We're talking about God not uh, finished with us. We talked about no matter what life happens to you, be it your fault or not your fault, that God is not done with you. Now, if I was ministering to you and you want me to pray for you right now, that you receive the restoration that God has for you, I want you to stand to your feet. And I, 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 you can know Jesus and all that. You can know him. But I'm talking about you had lost some stuff. You lost some stuff and that cock keep crawling in your head. You, some things have happened and it has messed you up. That thing has had, caused you to get into a state of depression that is hard to get out of. You have lost some things physically, mentally, spiritually, and you need to be restored today. Be bold enough to stand up. God is calling you. I see that person over there. I see that person right there. Come on now. Yes, I see you. I see you. I see you in the name of Jesus. Stand up. You got to be bold enough to stand up. Pa Peter. Peter got out the boat. He got out the boat, and he drew that net in. Oh, I see you. I see you. In the name of Jesus. Be bold enough to stand up. I know it's more. I know it's more. I know it's more. You lost something. You, 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 something, something, something clicked. Something, something just didn't feel right. Something happened. Something. Lord, I need to be restored again. I need to sense your presence again, Lord. I need to be replenished. I, I need to have hope again. I need to hear your love. That you love me. I, Lord, I, I need you. Oh, my, my. Everybody praying? Oh, I know it's more. I need you to come forward. I'm going to pray with you in the name of Jesus if you don't mind. Come forward in Jesus' name. Man, I'll tell you, if I'm lost, son, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up there. I'm coming in the name of Jesus. I'm coming. I'm coming in Jesus' name. Oh, no, Satan, you can't have what I... Satan, you cannot have it. No, sir, you cannot. No, I, the Lord is the restorer. The Lord wants to restore that which the canker worm had eaten. The Lord wants to give us back what, God, what Satan has stolen. The Lord wants to do even more. Oh, yes, he does. Yes, he does. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, some of you might have lost loved ones. Some of you might have lost your peace. Some, some of you, got, you lost your sleep. Where I can't sleep no more. I can't, I, I can't rest anymore. Some of you have lost your job. You lost your position, your, your standing. Uh, you lost finances. Some of you have lost finances. It's hard to get caught up now. What, what is going on here? Lost. He said, I'm the restorer. I'm the restorer. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We're going to give you just a few more minutes to join them. In the name of Jesus. This is a word in due season. In the name of Jesus. These last two years have been some wild years. These last two years have been huh, a time of great tragedy. Huh, yeah. These last two years have been rough. But the Lord said, it's over now. The precious oh, no. What have you lost? The Lord wants to restore. In the name of Jesus, the Lord wants to restore. Let me just say this to you all. Let me just say this to you all. First of all, it starts with understanding that God loves you. He loves you ooh, ferociously. Loves you. And anything 
that does not add up to his love for you is not of God. He loves you like that. And he cares about what you care about. It's important to him. Sometimes we think, oh, it ain't important to him. But yes, it is. You remember that scripture where it said, Jesus wept? You, you wonder, why, why are you weeping, Jesus? Why are you crying when Lazarus, his friend, died? He knew he was going to raise him up. He knew that. So why are you crying when you know you're going to get him up? He was crying because Mary and Martha and all those around him, hearts were broken. And the Bible says that he is a high priest touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So when it hurts you, it hurts him. And he says, I'm here. I'm here to heal that hurt. I'm here to restore what was taken from you. I'm here to give back your peace and your rest. I'm here to, take, to, to put you on a higher level because I, what, love you. So I want you to raise your hand to the Lord as I pray in Jesus' name. And I want you to receive his love for you. Just receive it. Just, just the way you are. He, he took Peter in just the way he was. I'm so glad he took me the way I am that I didn't have to try to fix myself up to make myself suitable for him. I didn't have to go through all these rigmaroles and all this incantations to try to be used by him. He wants to use you. He, he, he wants to love you. He wants to give to you. He wants to take you into his arms just the way you are. Oh, that's something beautiful. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, that you are the great restorer. Oh. That you are a high priest touched with the feelings of our infirmities. You are our answer to life's ills, to, to things that happen during life's way. And Lord, you're not here just to restore us, but to make us even better. Yes, Lord. To give back to us better. To restore back to us better. Why? Because you love us. And so, Lord, I ask that you bless each and every one here, that they sense your love, Lord. And when they leave here, no matter what happens, they know that you love them and that you got better for them, and you will start to unfold that in their lives, and they will receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. There's no qualifications in all this foolishness. The only qualification is the blood of Jesus. <laughs> God's liquid love cleansing us from all sin, cleansing us from all unrighteousness and making us beautiful once again restoring back to us what was taken from us oh my, 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 my and I say sweet sleep in the name of Jesus, give them sweet sleep restore back to their finances, uh, their, their health in the name of Jesus Restore back to them in the name of Jesus everything that Satan stole sevenfold in Jesus' name. And Lord, you said you, that, that, that you will restore back the years. Ah, the years that were taken from them. I thank you, Father, you restore back to them those years and then some in the name of Jesus. And we give you the glory, honor, and praise for it. And I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of them in Jesus' name. I see them standing strong. I see them standing healed. I see them standing delivered. I see them standing blessed. I see them standing as a witness and an example of your love in the earth. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that we love y'all, and uh, um, I'm going to... Uh
Um, well, this is not the regular altar call or anything like that. This is just uh, this is just so you guys can y'all can go on ahead and have a seat there. <laughs> Let's give them a big hand. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yes. Yes. God ain't done. God is not done. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we done walked down Peter and we seen how Peter was restored in Jesus' name. How'd y'all like that? Amen. We have uh Miss Logan. Oh, and happy Mother's Day, and thank y'all for the Mother's Day gift and all that kind of thing. I just love y'all, man. I ain't lying. Woo! I'm a blessed woman of God. I tell y'all, you guys are absolutely the best. Love y'all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That Peter is something else, isn't he? We can all learn from Peter. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's come. It comes. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We uh, come to a special time in our service. Amen. You've heard the word. You've been given the word. Now is your opportunity. Amen. Amen. It's opportunity to prosper. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, well, the Bible tells us. Uh, you want? Okay. All right. Okay, all mothers, stand up. Pastor Leslie has a special gift for you. Amen. All moms, stand up. That means if you a biological mom, you adopted mom, please stand. Amen. We're going to, okay. She has something special in here. Let's take it out. See, some folks want to see what they get. Oh, look at this. Ladies that are helping get those out to our moms. Thank you. Now you all know that Pastor Leslie got to give you something. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Every year you get something and it reminds you all year uh, that the, uh, God loves you. And we thank God for, for Pastor Leslie. We honor her, and she's honoring you all. Let's give her a hand. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We want to make sure every, all our moms get one. Keep your hands raised until they give one to you. Your hand raised and you didn't get one. 
That's everybody, I guess. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Yeah. We have somebody's hand. Who, who is that? Raise your hand again. Who was it? Oh, okay. They probably was scratching their head or something. Speaking the mic. Okay. Okay, praise God. Okay, we, is that everybody? All right, praise God. Amen, praise God. Okay, now it's opportunity to prosper. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. You probably have an offering envelope. Uh, here's an extra bag right here, too. Here's an extra bag. So, uh, <laughs> we got one right here. Okay. All right. She want to make sure that uh, everybody got one. All right. Praise God. Nobody raised their hands. I don't see. Okay. Uh, we can now uh, uh, receive our offering. Uh, you should have an offering envelope, right? You should have one in your chair. If you don't, raise your hand, and our ushers will get you one. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. And um, as you, uh, we want you to complete that envelope in its entirety. Amen. So you can get credit for your giving. And while you're doing that, I want to uh, read um, scripture to you. Amen. Glory to God. I have a scripture right here. Praise the Lord. The scripture uh, says in, over in Malachi chapter 3 and verses 8 through 10, the, the scripture says, Bring all your uh, tithes and offerings into the storehouse so there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I won't open up the windows of heaven, pour you our blessings, there won't be room enough to receive. Amen. Praise God. And I love that other part of the scripture. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen. Praise God. Now, Pastor Lester just got through ministry on um, how the enemy comes, you know, and Minister Noreen uh, uh, alluded to it. But when you give and you're giving from your heart and you should not give begrudgingly or out of necessity, which means out of compulsion, you should give because you love God. Amen. And God says that he will give back to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Amen. Praise God. You know, giving is an act of love. God so loved that he gave. We love God and we give back. Why do we give back? Not just cause so we can receive. That is a part of, of the principle. But we give so that others can be blessed. Amen? Praise God. How many of you want your bank account to begin to increase? This is your opportunity. Amen? To sow into the kingdom. And guess what? The kingdom doesn't pay like man pays. God gives more than enough. Amen. So when we're going to pray over your offering, and when we pray over your offering, you pray over it yourself uh, because God is listening for your voice. Amen. Praise God. So let's lift our offering up to our high priest. His name is Jesus, and I'm going to pray over your offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for giving us seed to sow. You give seed to the sower. And we thank you that as we give, we don't give, Father God, begrudgingly or out of necessity. We give because we have a prompt to do it hard to give. That giving that comes from you. And we thank you in advance, Father, for your promise. They're saying that you would give back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto our bosom. And Father, we know that you want us blessed, for you give us power to get wealth so that your covenant can be established in the earth. And we are sowing this seed now, Father God, out of our love for you. And we thank you for our angels, and we dispatch them to go forth now and bring that which we have need of, not just for ourselves, but for the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. All in agreement, say amen. amen. 
Praise God. You may receive the offering. Amen. Praise God. Follow the direction of our ushers. Uh,